Well, uh, I wonder if I could ask you first about your cyber terrorism policy that you were talking about. Uh, or views. You were saying how you should treat so countries which harbor cyber terrorists the same as, as real terrorists today. And that kind of surprised me because you know, the last five years we've been to war twice over supposedly harboring terrorists. And what is your, what do you, I mean, surely that's not what you're advocating. Well, uh, I mean, ultimately terrorism is a crime. And uh, I, mean, I don't think war is the only, the only response to criminal behavior. But uh, I mean, should we, simply because you, I mean, if you cause lots of people to die uh, by using, maliciously using bits and bytes, is that different from using TNT? I don't think there is a difference. And if you know who's done it, then uh, you, one should demand those people to be extradited and put on trial. And uh, I think that's what I mean when I say that we should treat them the same way. I mean, after all, the, uh, the, the terrorists are, that we know of, we don't know where they are. Or we, don't, we may know what, I mean, they're, not, they're living outside the rule of law, uh, say, in a country like Afghanistan. In the case of cyber terrorists, uh, I mean, they have, uh, they have uh, uh, IP addresses, identifiable IP addresses. So we know where they are and who they are if, you look, if we look hard enough. Okay. And you mentioned also your strong support for Georgia and Ukraine getting mapped over the next couple of days. Um, are you worried at all that the issues in Georgia with South Ossetia and Abkhazia would uh, delay that or complicate their, their membership, and maybe that would be a reason not to give them that. I'm more worried that uh, that Ossetia and Abkhazia can be used ex as excuses not to give map. All you need to do is turn up the temperature a little bit and make it a little hotter, and uh, I think that's the problem. I also reject the argument that you uh, cannot take a country into even map uh, because it has uh, because it may have. Uh, sort of separate or different areas uh, that are not under its jurisdiction because all we have to do is think of 1955 and the enlargement to the Federal Republic of Germany where clearly uh, one third of the country was not under the jurisdiction of the Bundesrepublik Deutschland but nonetheless Bundesrepublik Deutschland has been a loyal member for 53 years. And one last question, what is the the key benefit that Estonia has gained from NATO out of everything? The key benefits? I don't know what the key benefit is. Certainly, I think uh, we breathe uh, a little more easily. I mean, as I mentioned in my speech, uh, we, uh, despite the bad weather, a lot of people like our real estate. And over the past 800 years, they keep coming and invading us uh, because they like our real estate. And we think that maybe uh, now that we're in NATO, we can breathe a little more easily that, uh, that our, our valuable real estate and the people living on it uh, don't have to worry so much. Well, thanks so much for speaking to me. Great. All the best. Thanks. <laughs>